Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to Digital Goat Academy. Guys, man, if you're tuning into my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way in or on the way out. It is your host, The Digital Goat. It is 8.56 p.m. Eastern Time, May 2nd, guys. So the second day of May, we are here. So welcome to my session today. What we're going to go over is reading the news. Um, I'm just going to give a brief, you know, um, summary, guys, on how I use pretty much the news, things that you should be looking for, um, different news outlets that you guys could be taking advantage of, and, you know, things like that. So welcome to my class today, guys. Let me go ahead and get into the session so we can go ahead and maybe potentially look at the market. So what is news, right, guys? What is news? So News is the fundamentals of trading. As you guys know, there you have your technicals, you have your sentiment, which is basically your opinion, and then you have your fundamentals of the market, guys. Now, back in the day, when you look at like 1980s, 1970s, they heavily relied on fundamentals. That was actually widely taught like within like business schools um, to actually look at the market from a fundamental approach until technicals actually proved to be a little bit more accurate. Now they work hand in hand. I wouldn't say you don't need the other, but you can be limited on either or, you know what I'm saying? But mainly in this day and age, we're more of technical analysis guys, but I guess it just depends on what market you're looking at. So if you're looking at the stock market, maybe you are coming from a more fundamental approach guys. And what do I mean by fundamental approach? Well, you know, news relies on, well, the, fun, the fundamentals of the market relies on like data, um, what's going on in the economy, what different companies are doing, what that currency is doing as far as like if it's strong or weak at that time. Things like that go into the fundamentals of news, guys. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, uh, covering that. But I want to give you guys some news outlets I personally use. Now, the list probably goes on besides these guys. <laughs> And now I put Bloomberg first because one, that's like my sports center. I watch some guys religiously. Um, it's definitely helped me made, made, make um, good investments in the market. They don't just give it to you, but if you understand the dialogue of what they're saying, um, you can kind of break it down Barney style for yourself to be like, that's not that, that pretty much, I did my research, that's a good investment. Now, Bloomberg surveillance, that's just one segment which is the most important segment to me with jonathan farrell the guy on the right he's from um uk tom keen og in the middle and lisa i don't know how to pronounce her last name she gotta forgive me i don't know how to pronounce her last name so um yeah they're the big three for bloomberg in the morning for new york session guys so they don't they have um like small headlines or they have well one they have guests that come on give their opinion everybody's an expert in their field. So just listen to what they say and see how the market reacts off of that. Don't be reactive or impulsive to what you're hearing. Just listen and see what the market does. And then you can make a you know bias, not necessarily just off of that. You should already have your bias, but it can, it can help you put you in a better position. Or if your bias is off, put you in the right direction of the market. So Bloomberg is what I watch. Um, I watch that on YouTube, guys. Now, you can go on the website, which I'm probably going to dive into that in a few. You can go on the website and find other data points, but it's just a lot of information. So you have MSM Money, <clears throat> Forex Factory. Now, MSM Money, I used to use them, guys. I used to use them for, like, indices, but I stopped using them because, like, I only focus on what I focus on. So you don't need all these outlets in combination. You just need like one or two. So Forex Factory, I don't rely on it anymore. Um, that's more geared towards of what I use with like, it's, rela it's correlated to like my FX book. So my FX book is my main um, news outlet that I use as far as like when I'm looking at data that's coming out, whether it's like um, non-farm payroll or fed interest rate decision outside of bloomberg like i just discovered bloomberg after i was using all these other small outlets investing.com i used to use that so msm money forex factory well i know bloomberg does have this but the 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 last set they all um 
pretty much are alike. So they have pretty much a, a similar information. You guys can decipher whichever one you're going to choose, but you know, whichever one you're going to choose is going to give you information um, the same way as the next one does. Now I have seen small differences between like investing.com and my FX book, but that's about it for that. Now, let me show you guys like my FX book, the news outlet that I personally use, but also um, how to actually uh, use this information or see what happens when these news outlets come out and then how the market reacts, all right? So let me go to the internet. Uh... <clears throat> okay, so you see my FX book, right? www.myfxbook, um, you know, pretty straightforward guys. Now, the only thing you need to care about I mean, you guys can use this information or go through all this stuff on your own time. But the only thing you need to care about is the economic calendar. That's our focus right now, right? So click the economic calendar. You don't have to have an account with these guys in order to view this information, but you can create an account. It definitely will give you more benefits than not having an account, but it's just, I mean, not having a, yeah, an account with them is free. So it's a free account. Definitely give you access to more amenities. So economic uh, <laughs> economic calendar right so if you look based off the calendar is telling you economic calendar is giving you interest rate decisions which is definitely volatile news and holidays that's coming up you have over here that gives you pretty much your time stamp which is like you either have you can go back to yesterday you can go you can do today you can see what news comes out tomorrow you can see for this week and then you can see for next week i'm not sure how far out you can see i actually never look to see because you know mainly some of the information i get like i said they'll mention it on bloomberg and i'll kind of jot that down so i don't necessarily uh go weeks out and see how far in advance news because i mean you know trade the trend it's not that deep you know in the market to really be trying to i mean depending on if you, I guess it's a little bit different if you're an investor, you know, if you're looking at stock investment. So maybe in that aspect, but as far as like trading, you trade the trend and, you know, with the news that comes out. Now you do want to know what comes out that week though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will say that not like weeks out, but you do want to know what comes out that week um, at the beginning of the week, not in the middle of the week. Right. So if you see right here, guys, we have impact previous consensus an actual so i mean kind of self-explanatory this is pretty much the the volatility of the news right so the impact would be if it's high or red it'll be vo extremely volatile news this would be like moderate volatile news and this would be like just pretty much regular everyday news that comes out now your red and your orange will definitely affect the market heavily but regardless all these affect the market make no mistake it's just the intensity that it affects it at right so if we go if we scroll down let's see what news looks like like currently okay so if you see it gives you the time stamp gives you the time that the news is coming out and how much time is left before that news is released so you have 24 minutes right and you see right here, like, for instance, like Japanese yen, this was a holiday, right? This was a holiday. So no news came out on that. That's that means whatever currency is against the yen, that's what's controlling the movement. You see what I'm saying? So Australian dollar and you guys can hover over it. If you're like ever seeing some of these countries, that's like it says Europe, but it has like a different country flag. Just hover over it with your icon and it'll show you like whatever that country is um or that state is and you know use them find it for that pair specifically i know we can use euro like you know the euro against um you know the united states dollar but you can go further and seeing like what country it, it exactly is affecting and maybe try to find that index on what that country's um currency is moving like right that makes sense guys right so we have high impact news coming up <clears throat> You'll always see the previous. You'll always see the consensus. Oh, excuse me. Hold on. And the actual, the actual right here sometimes generate, right? But it's the actual from the last information that was given, right? 
So don't be fooled when you see like, why is there an actual, but it's telling me I got like 23 minutes left. The actual will pretty much be whatever happened previously, right? If you see that, right? It'll, it'll be given those numbers. And then once the news comes out, those numbers will change, right? So what if we if we click into this, we'll see like what this exact, exact news outlet um, is meaning, right? So Australia retail sales, and this is month, right? MOM is month, right? So the retail sales report gives an aggregated assessment of retail goods and services sales during a specific period over time. Retail sales in Australia are seasonal, variable, and it's a major contribute, contributor to the total economy in the country. A higher than expected now, even if you don't care about this information, it may you may be like, oh man, like, you know, let me see if I can do some further investigation on this, right? But this, as a trader, this is mainly what you care about because whatever the reaction is, you, you need to make sure this states that, right? So for instance, it says higher than expected figure should be seen as positive, bullish, meaning going up, right? Positive or bullish for the AUD, while a lower than expected figure should be seen as a negative bearish for the AUD. That means it's selling. Now, when we're looking at news and you have multiple news articles that's coming out, the market is going to react off of all those. So you can't sit here and see the first one and be like, oh, the market is selling or buying, you know what I'm saying, when the first news article comes out. Now, obviously, or hopefully you got your bias um, at that point and you're just looking for a potential entry and you're not just trying to chase the market so you form your bias say the market is selling news comes out right news may even can make it continue to sell but then you got another news article coming out right this may push the market back up to a better sell zone even higher than what you anticipated because all all this impact is or all this this is is volatility so it's not necessarily saying that it's making the market go in that direction strong it's making the market react in a more violent way where it's like it'll throw confusion at most traders that try to jump in at the time that this news is coming out right so AUD. Now I want to see, I want to see, for instance, this was at seven o'clock, right? AUD, the last news that came out since we only have 20 minutes left for the Australian dollar. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a random Australian dollar pair and I'm going to look to see how, matter of fact, I'm going to just do AUD CAD because, um, uh, we, one of my, uh, business partners or one of my teammates uh as far as like traders was looking at aud cad um she had a good ass call out the entry was just like too too precise you know what i'm saying so if she didn't take the entry she missed it by well let me actually pull it up for you guys So you see right here, um, this is AUD CAD, right? So I'm just kind of going over this because she missed this entry by basically 10 pips, 10 pips from her entry because this was her entry. We spotted something that I normally identify a pattern in the market on like a three hour time frame, and the market responded accordingly, right? But that's not what we're here to talk about, right? So the market is currently consolidating right now. It is consolidating. So that's what that high volatility news might do for this specific pair. It might make it break out, whatever direction it's trying to do. But let's look at exactly at 1900, which is seven o'clock. And what did the market do? This is 2900, 1900. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna go back real quick to what that news said all right so the actual the actual was worse both of them right at seven o'clock uh so at seven o'clock it started bullish which is it's showing that right at seven o'clock it started bullish right let's go back to the chart At seven o'clock, 
because this is where this market opened at. It started bullish, right? Definitely started bullish. Pushed down a little bit and started, well, I mean, open bearish, then started bullish. Next candle was bearish. Now, if you remember, those last two articles that they had was pretty much red was a negative response, right? So it was worse than expected. So as soon as eight o'clock hit with that last news, now it's the whole block time of like seven o'clock. It's not just like seven o'clock, like all this news is, is supposed to react in that way. It's going through the whole block time of seven o'clock. So if we break down this hour, right? 45 minute. So you see 9.15, let me break it down to a 30, I'm in a 30 minute. Yep. So all the way up until 9.30, break it down more, it's probably like 9.45. Yep, that whole block, because remember, it started bullish. It started bullish. That whole block hour, it was bullish. It was buying up. Now, how many pips was that? Now, you wouldn't have wanted to have been caught in this because it's consolidation. Yeah, you, you wouldn't even want to have been to have been in this market. But anyway, you saw the news was positive. Here, let's go back. The news started off positive, right? For the Australian dollar at 9 o'clock, positive, right? Green means positive, red means negative. So make sure you guys, um, oh, the only thing that I got that I forgot to mention is that make sure this information, it's saying that it's positive and bullish and not the opposite. Sometimes positive can be seen as a negative, but you have to read that. So if it gives you a number that should be positive and it's showing you that it's negative, then you probably need to go back and read and make sure it says that. But look, the whole block hour, the whole block hour of seven o'clock up until the last 45, well, I mean, the last 25 minutes in that market, right? So bullish, 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 45, um, 745 market gets bearish or like 735 or something like that market gets bearish. Let's go back to it. So you see that this was the candle where the market got bearish. Those two last news outlets came out, brought the market down, right? Brought the market down and then it just retested, right? So what I'm showing you guys is that, okay, when, when you're identifying this news and you're trying to find your entry, obviously you need to already have your bias. You're not trying to use news to put you in the right direction, but you can see how it responds based off of this data that's actually filtering in at that time. Now, you don't want to be in the market per se when you have like a lot of high impact news coming out. That's those red and um, orange folders or those red and orange um, icons. You want to you don't want to be in that market then. But depending on your entry, say you caught an entry down here and you're just trying to see like, man, I don't want this news to create a reversal you can start using that data to make sure like, okay, I can see now that it's consolidating. That's all that news was doing. Pretty much throwing buyers and sellers off that were jumping into the market late and that didn't get a move down here. So when you're looking at news, if you get a positive reaction and you're already in, okay, I know that for this time period, that news is actually um, still trending in my direction, right? I, but I see a high impact uh, folder that, is red and then it may I, I don't know what the consensus is but the consensus may be negative and i'm still expecting the market to be positive maybe i either want to start protecting my profits like putting my stop in the profit or maybe just close out the trade and look for a potential entry instead of trying to hold it and see what happens make sense guys like that's all you got to do with like news now it gets deeper and um you know we'll discuss that another day it does get deeper where it's like you can use like, 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 again, I promote Bloomberg because there's been a lot of things they have said not and it's like it's not them just telling you outright what's going on like no you have to decipher it guys you have to make sense of it, but at the same time when you're viewing it, you know they're saying a lot of stuff that you're seeing the market react based off of these conversations. 
and you can make a decision to jump in the market. Have I used like Bloomberg or a news outlet coming out to jump to use it as like uh, uh, the momentum I need to jump in the market? Yes, I did this with like a pair of like USD JPY one time. And I was like, okay, based off what they're saying, we're going to be buying. And we bought for like 20 pips and then got out because the market reversed. But that was a good impulse spike. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely don't look at news for like long moves. It's more so of like, okay, this could give us like a clean 30, 40, 50 pip candle. And then we just get out the market and see what it does from there. So I hope this stuff helped you guys. Um, you know, I don't really think news is like that, that difficult. But again, you have to continuously like listen to like what these big wigs are talking about um, going through these news outlets and at least trying to understand the information if you're going to make sense of it to use in your trading. If not, guys, keep doing what you've been doing. But um, I'm here to tell you if you're 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 fighting half the battle, if you're just only doing technicals alone. Yes, you can be great with technicals or whatnot, but sometimes the well most times the fundamentals either prevent you from being in the market when you shouldn't be or put you in the right direction when you thought you know your technicals was telling you this because technicals manipulate us as well guys so i hope y'all enjoyed this hope y'all found value yeah, found value in this man always guys hit that like button on your way out make sure you guys subscribe to my channel man i appreciate that if you just keep forgetting um, again, hit that. Com I mean, leave a comment, guys, if you guys want to see some more stuff. If you found value on this training, man, um, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you stay up to date on my content. And like I said, always before, as always, guys, see you guys at the top because we're taking everybody to the top with us in 2023.